Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cocktail Blog. I'm Steve the Bartender, and today I'm recreating the 10 finalists from the 2021 Coffee Cocktail Challenge. So the first five cocktails I'm doing are judges' picks, and the next five are publicly voted. So apart from that, there is no particular order, so this is not gonna give away who is going to win the Coffee Cocktail Challenge. You'll have to stay tuned for the judging video. First is Mr. Black Forest. This calls for 40 ml of Mr. Black cold brew liqueur after I muddle two blackberries. So 40 ml, one and a third ounce, followed by an aged drum, 20 ml. So I'm actually doing a blend of a Jamaican and a rum from Barbados. 20 mil, two thirds of an ounce in total. Then a strawberry and balsamic shrub. Now, because I'm doing 10 cocktails, I don't have the time to run through and show you how to make all the, the cordials, shrubs, syrups, but all the details will be in the description below. 15 mil, half an ounce. Add ice and give it a shake. Into a chilled Nick and Nora, double strain. Mr. Black and those blackberries make it go incredibly dark. Definitely want to double strain this one with that uh, blackberry pulp and pips. And the garnish is a dark tempered chocolate with dehydrated raspberry. And the original creator said the best way to enjoy this is by biting the chocolate and then having a sip of the drink. So, here it goes. Good so far. The color is quite deceptive. It's quite uh, vibrant and acidic from the strawberry and balsamic shrub. Hmm. On to the next one. The Mr. Fizz. This one calls for 30 ml, one ounce of the following three ingredients. So Mr. Black Cold Brew Coffee Liqueur, and an aged Cuban rum. I'm using Havana Club Special and Yeho. And a tawny, a fortified. I'm using something local from Sepulsville. Again, 30 ml one ounce. Next, orja, almond orja, almond syrup, 22.5 uh, ml, three quarter ounce. And likewise for the next ingredient, fresh lemon juice. and one egg white. It's got egg white, it's a fizz, so I'm gonna dry shake and then wet shake. into an ice cold glass. And I'll rest this one in the freezer for 90 seconds. And then 90 ml, three ounces of soda water. I won't get too greedy this time with the foam. Then finish with some freshly grated nutmeg. 
Perfect. Cheers. Oh. This one is quite rich, quite sweet. Uh, you get a lot of those raisin characteristics from the tawny, uh, which, and that is quite a, a sweet fortified. Beautiful aromatics on the nose from that nutmeg. Next cocktail is the coffee and cola. Now this one probably has one of the most intricate uh, syrups that I had to make for this particular challenge. It has a pandan cola nut, ginkgo nut, and longan, longan, yes, cat, longan uh, syrup. Now the, the aromatics and the, the smell that was coming off this syrup whilst I was making it in the kitchen was incredible. And it just reminded me of holidays in Southeast Asia. So. Let's get on to the cocktail. 40 ml uh, of cognac. The recipe did call for 40 ml of uh, Martel. One and a third ounce into the mixing glass. 20 ml, two thirds of an ounce of Mr. Black, cold brew coffee liqueur. And 20 ml of the, the syrup. Again, the recipe to this, there'll be a link in the description. And the syrup was reduced by 50% and had uh, palm sugar in it. So um, like a dark, a bit of a darker palm sugar. So it's got some rich molasses like characteristics. And then one drop of black walnut bitters. One drop. Fill the mixing glass with ice and stir for about 30 seconds. 40 seconds. That pandan. and garnish with a pandan leaf. I love the simplicity of this, just a nice, really aromatic pandan leaf there with a really big clear, clear cube. Cheers. The pandan and cola nut is the most prominent on the nose. Oh, and then the coffee comes through. I was, a little bit skeptical about how sweet this would be, knowing uh, how much sugar was in this and then reducing it by 50% as well. So, I mean, it's very viscous, it's a really thick syrup. It is a sweeter cocktail, but I think the, the cognac sort of cuts through that, that sweetness and it works quite well. And the coffee's prominent as well. And now we have the Rumble in the Jungle. This one calls for 50 grams of pineapple wedges and half a passion fruit. I'm assuming pulp. So that's added into the shaker and gently muddled. Then 50 ml, one ounce and two thirds. One ounce and two thirds, is that right? 50 ml, one and two third ounce. Sure. Of coconut tequila. Coconut and pineapple. Flavors go really well together. Should be good. 20 ml, two thirds of an ounce of Mr. Black cold brew coffee liqueur. Then we have 30 ml, one ounce of Brazilian espresso. Got most of it in the jigger. 20 ml, two thirds of an ounce of grapefruit juice. and 10 ml of agave syrup. Fill the cocktail shake with ice and give it a shake for 12 seconds. And the recipe calls for reverse dry shaking. Then it's poured into a double old fashioned glass filled with ice with a smoked salt rim. And it's garnished with a brulee lime wheel. Simply sugar sprinkled on top, torched, 
until it caramelizes. They have the Rumble in the Jungle. Cheers. You get that uh, caramelized burnt lime on the nose. That's up front the most. It's quite tropical and tangy. I feel like there's a little bit of uh, conflicting flavors in there. There's a lot going on. I mean, you've got uh, coconut, coffee, grapefruit, agave, pineapple, smokiness, and passion fruit. That's a lot in one drink. Next cocktail is the Walking in Memphis, which is fantastic to see this drink in the finals because it is from my home city in Adelaide. And it was picked by the other judges in the cocktail competition. So uh, judges from interstate and from overseas. Um, yeah, there's quite a few Adelaide bartenders that entered into the comp. So this is brilliant. I'm looking forward to this one. So the recipe calls for 40, 40 mil, one and a third ounce of Mr. Black. The only thing is, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall with the other judges, uh, especially over in America, because some of these ingredients, or well, three of the ingredients, are all local to, to Adelaide, to South Australia. So it would have been quite hard to, to source, or they would have had to have substituted. Uh, this one is uh, Sepperdsfield uh, DP117, which is a floor apparel, a fortified wine, uh, like a Fino style. So we've got uh, 30 mil. So Fino style fortified wine. And then a house made yuzu cello, which is, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Uh, shochu, um, a Japanese spirit. It's single distilled. It's made from barley and koji. Uh, so because it's only single distilled, it retains the, the flavor of the barley and their house-made yuzu cello is infused with yuzu, obviously, and uh, sweetened with sugar. And this one was quite difficult because yuzu is not in season and relatively hard to get in Australia. Uh, 20 mil, two thirds of an ounce. And a wattle seed distillate. Again, wattle seed is a native to Australia. Incredibly hard for the people over in the US to, to source some wattle seed. Um, I think the, the best thing I can liken this to is probably coffee. So wattle seed goes really well with coffee. Uh, 10 mil. So whilst I couldn't make a distillate, this is uh, wattle seed um, infused into a, a vodka. Um, what's the word? with a sous vide. And we have verjuice from a local winery. Fortunately, I could actually reproduce this with all these ingredients are what the original recipe called for. Uh, 20 mil, two thirds of an ounce. And if you're not familiar with verjuice, then it is a it's a highly acidic juice produced uh, by unripened grapes. As with all these recipes, I will leave more details in the description below in regards to the ingredients and the recipe, the inspiration and so forth. This one's shaken with ice. It was actually a short shake with ice. Probably sh yeah. Don't wanna over dilute this cocktail. I shook it for about five seconds too long. Forgive me. The strain of a pebble ice. And it's topped with more pebble ice. Stainless steel straw, and there you have a walking in Memphis. Was it ice Ooh. It's very smooth. Uh, I was expecting more acidity from the, the verjuice and the, the yuzu cello. But the dryness of the, the Fino style uh, fortified 
balance it out. And there's like some smooth coffee notes to that. It's really interesting. Okay guys, onto the publicly voted cocktails for the next five. Um, this particular one, the Mad Master, has 12 ingredients. I don't think I've made a cocktail with 12 ingredients or more on this channel. So you'll have to forgive me uh, for brevity and for the sake of space on the bar and getting on camera. I've bashed a couple of ingredients in this bad boy right here. So I also need my list because my memory is not that good and I can't remember 12 ingredients in the exact measurements. This cocktail has 45 ml of a peaty Scotch whiskey and it does call for Laphroaig, 10 year. 45 ml, 1.5 ounces. Which I'm a little bit worried about because most cocktails that call for Laphroaig have a bar spoon or just, just over because um, it's an intense whiskey and there's a lot of smoke to it. And then 30 ml of Jamaican overproof Smith & Cross, one ounce. So this drink has a relatively high ABV. And then 22.5 mil, three quarter ounce of Mr. Black Cold Brew Coffee Liqueur. Then my batched ingredient. This little jar here has uh, 20, the recipe is gonna be here if it fits on screen. 22.5 mil, three quarter ounce of Sauvignon Blanc. 45 ml of pressed tomato juice, 1.5 ounce. 30 ml, one ounce of coconut water. And 15 ml, half an ounce of grapefruit juice. This looks like a big drink already. <laughs> uh, next ingredient is 30 ml, one ounce of freshly pressed lime juice. Recipe says, with husks. I hope that's what you meant. <laughs> We've got cashew orza, 22.5 mil. Add some nuttiness to the tomato, smoky, funky Jamaican coffee flavors. And then we have three dashes of Peshawar's bitters. Two dashes of Regan's orange bitters. Shout out to Daniel Regan for buying the back bar. And 10 drops of ginger bitters. Shout out to Patrician's bitters. Uh, I purchased these bitters off uh, Peter Patrician over in the US. So I'll leave a link to his bitters in the description below. The flavor of these bitters are incredible. So good. I bought these quite some time ago but it's the first time I've had a chance to use them on the channel. 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Even without dilution, I'm not sure how this is gonna fit in my highball glass. <laughs> the recipe does call for adding a significant amount of crushed ice and shaking for eight to 12 seconds, dumping it into the glass and then topping with crushed ice. I have a feeling it's not gonna fit. So I'm not gonna to add too much crushed ice for now. I'm sorry for not 100% following the recipe, but it's not gonna fit in the glass. He did say if you don't like the lime husk in the glass, then just strain it through the crushed ice. I'll only put a little bit of crushed ice because there's a lot of drink here. There's still quite a bit in this shaker. Um, and it does call for topping with the crushed ice, but I can't do that. <laughs> Calls for a, a sprig of mint. Add a couple of little sprigs freshly sprouting from the garden. There you have the Mad Master. I was very cautious when I first saw this recipe. Uh, it caught my eye because it did have a really nice photo, uh, but it had the addition of tomato juice. And tomato juice is my nemesis. OK, 
considering how many flavors are going on, this it's it's very like um, it's tiki fired. It's got the rum. It's got smokiness. Uh, it tastes more tropical than the ingredients led me to believe. Because I was thinking of tomato juice and orja coffee, but the smoke and the uh, Jamaican rum kind of leads the show in this one. I mean, there's definitely a, a lot going on in this cocktail with the 12 ingredients and some ingredients are fairly hidden. Uh, the Lafroy and the Smith and Cross are the most prominent. Hmm. Interesting. Next, we have the Magic Bean Martini. This particular one calls for one ounce, 30 mil of Mr. Black. 22.5 mil, three quarter ounce of vanilla vodka. And seven and a half mil, quarter ounce of a brown creme de cacao. 22.5 mil, three quarter ounce of cold brew. And 15 mil, half ounce of tonka bean syrup. And the recipe called for five drops of saline solution. The saline solution recipe does say one to 100, which is pretty much water. There's not a lot of salt when it's a one to 100 ratio, but one, two, three, four, five. Fill the shake with ice and shake for 12 to 15 seconds. And it's double strained into a chilled martini glass. They have the magic bean martini. The original recipe does call for a pea shoot garnish coming out the top, hence the name magic beans martini. Cheers. It's a sweet riff on a espresso martini with uh, notes of vanilla, chocolate, and uh, tonka bean. And cocktail number eight is the night and day. This one is another shaken cocktail, which calls for a spice rum. 45 mil, 1.5 ounce. I'm using Brick Spice Rum, which is an Australian spiced. 30 mil, one ounce of Mr. Black. Twenty mil, two thirds of an ounce of raspberry liqueur. In this case, I'm using Chambord black raspberry liqueur. Fifteen mil, half an ounce of Malibu coconut rum liqueur. And five mil of peach puree. And shake for twelve to fifteen seconds with plenty of ice. It also has a dash of soda water. So I add that straight to the shaker before I strain the fresh ice into an old fashioned glass. And the garnish calls for a coffee biscuit. They have the night and day. Cheers. I definitely thought this drink was gonna be a little bit sweeter than it is given that You've got a sweeter style rum, uh, a liqueur, a liqueur and peach puree. But the soda water kind of cuts back on that. But I still think it needs a little bit of work. There's, there's a good combination of rum and coffee, but then, yeah, it needs a little bit of tweaking. And the second to last cocktail on the top 10 list is the cherry and espresso sour. This one calls for 45 mil, 
1.5 ounce of Mr. Black, 30 mil one ounce of Disarono Amaretto, Thirty mil, one ounce of espresso, freshly poured. Then twenty two point five mil, three quarter ounce of fresh lemon juice. And seven point five mil, one quarter ounce of liqueur forty three, which is a Spanish Spanish liqueur, vanilla as well as other spices. One egg white and 15 mil, half an ounce of simple syrup. And this recipe calls for a reverse dry shake. So shaking with ice first, straining it, and then dry shaking. The recipe then calls to be double strained into a chilled coupe glass. And you might need a large coupe because it's a big drink. Garnish calls for three coffee beans and Luxardo Maraschino cherry hearts. So the easiest way to do that is use a straw and add drops ever so delicately onto the glass, onto the drink I should say. And use a toothpick to swirl and turn those little maraschino syrup drops into love hearts. So the addition of egg white as well as the coffee has made a really nice crema to this cocktail. Uh, the maraschino drops into the love heart shape. It looks really nice. There you have the cherry and espresso sour. Although I would be a little bit hesitant to call it a cherry and espresso sour because there's only a couple of cherry drops on the top as opposed to being incorporated into the drink. But I'm sure it will work very well. It's really quite bright from the, um, the citrus notes. Probably a little bit of an addition from the cherry juice as well, uh, like, like sour kind of bright notes to it, which is surprising. I was expecting it to be a little bit sweeter. Um, rich coffee notes. And there's a prominent marzipan flavor to it. And last but not least is the unknown journey. This one calls for yuzu liqueur. So that's a, a couple of cocktails we've had featuring yuzu. Uh, another few common Ingredients that we've had is a lot of a lot of drinks featuring saline solution um, and pumpkin spice. Given the time of year, it was just leading up to Halloween. So, gin, use a liqueur, and coffee. So, 45 mil, 1.5 ounces. I'm using beef eater gin and choya, use a liqueur. 30 mil one ounce. For those who aren't familiar with yuzu, it's a like, it's a citrus fruit and it's really quite bright and acidic. And 22.5 mil, three quarter ounce of Mr. Black coffee liqueur. Then 45 mil, 1.5 ounce of espresso. Freshly extracted. 10 mil, one third of an ounce of two to one honey syrup. Freshly squeezed grapefruit juice, 10 mil, one third of an ounce. And the same for the fresh lime, 10 mil, one third of an ounce. Fill with ice, but the recipe only calls for a very short shake, five or so seconds.
It's then fine strained into a chilled coupe glass and the garnish calls for expressed oils of the yuzu fruit. But it's out of season here in Australia. It's hard to get. So the recipe did call for a backup of uh, breadfruit. Express and discard. And this rounds out the 10 finalists of the 2021 Coffee Cocktail Challenge. The Unknown Journey. Cheers. Given the amount of acidity that is in yuzu, um, grapefruit and lime juice, it's really kind of subdued and, and hidden by, behind the, the 45 mil, 1.5 ounce of, uh, of espresso. The, the bitterness kind of like, yeah, overtakes that that uh, acidity. The honey is there, but it's, it's, it's quite muted and everything kind of overpowers the gin a little bit. Definitely coffee forward. Needs a little bit of tweaking. Thanks for watching today's top 10 finalists of the Coffee Cocktail Challenge for 2021. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up. And of course, let me know in the comments below which cocktail out of these top 10 you would prefer. I'll see you soon for another cocktail video. Cheers.